Good morning, and welcome on this, the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. It is my hope that this service will be a blessing for all of us who are gathered here and for those who uh, may be watching online with us this morning or may watch later. A few announcements for this morning. Uh, first of all, happy Father's Day. And um, Vacation Bible School is uh, August 1st through the 5th from 5 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. We're going to start with a meal and then we'll have programs and we invite everybody to join us. This is open to all ages and um, at least come for the supper and, and join us for the meal. Um, acolyte training will be next Sunday uh, right after the service and uh, the youth are going on a fun trip to Frankie's and uh, that's open to any youth that is going into grade fifth and up so we invite you to join us for that and I think maybe Neil might join us after work <laughs> so um, all right uh, are there any announced oh choir practice will begin next Wednesday, not this coming Wednesday, but the, the 30th, right? That would be the 30th. So that would be the same night that the youth are going on their little excursion. And, uh, normal time, I believe, was 6.30? Please so, correct me if I'm wrong. 6.30, Wednesday, the 30th. So we look forward to having the choir back with us. Are there any other announcements? All right, then I invite you to stand for our confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. St. John writes in 1 John, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. Our provider help us it is hard to believe there is enough to share we question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live we turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you we take offense at your teachings and your ways turn us again to you where else can we turn Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the man from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Our first hymn today is Eternal Father, Strong to Save.
Let us pray. O God of creation, eternal majesty, you preside over land and sea, sunshine and storm. By your strength, you pilot us. By your power, preserve us. By your first reading is from Job chapter 38. At the end of the book of Job, after Job and his companions have argued about the cause of the great suffering Job endures, God finally speaks. These verses begin that speech, which is a grand vision of creation, describe, describing God's ordering of the cosmos and inviting Job to marvel at his beauty. The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Who is this that the darkness counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up your loins like a man. I will question you, and you shall declare to me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding, who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? On what were, on what on what were its bases sunk, or who laid its cornerstone when the morning stars sang together and all the heavenly beings shouted for joy? Or who shut in the sea with doors when it burst out from the womb? When I made the clouds its garment and thick darkness its swaddling band and prescribed bounds for it and set bars and doors and said, Thus far shall you come and no farther, and here shall your proud waves be stopped. The word of the Lord. Thanks to be God. to God. According to St. Mark, the fourth chapter. When evening had come, Jesus said to the disciples, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd behind, they took Jesus with them in the boat, just as he was. Other boats were with him. A great windstorm arose, and the Praise to you, O oh Christ. I'd like to invite the children to come forward. It's time for Colony Kids. It's time for Colony Kids. It's time for, time for, time for Colony Kids. Good morning. Oh, I gotta put my mask on. Remind me if I forget, okay? Okay. So, did you hear the story I just read? What was the story about? It was about God. Jesus was in a boat. Have you ever been in a boat? Has it ever gotten really rocky with the waves? Is that kind of scary? 
Well, Jesus' disciples, they thought it was scary because it wasn't just the waves, but it was the rain and the wind. And their boats weren't very big. Have, no. It might have been about as long as one of those pews. And there they were in this little boat. And they didn't, you know, they used the wind to get from place to place. But when the wind is blowing really hard, it gets kind of scary. So there are Jesus and his disciples, and they're on this boat. And the wind is blowing, and they're scared. So they went to Jesus and said, wake up, wake up, we're going to die. And Jesus says, silly disciples, don't you know anything yet? And then he said, peace. Except that Jesus didn't speak English, did he? What, you know what language Jesus spoke? Well, he probably spoke a little Hebrew, but his main language was Aramaic. You know what that word is? Shalom. Can you say that? Shalom. Shalom. Good morning. Can you say shalom? Shalom. That means peace. And so Jesus stood up and he said, peace, be still. And the storm quieted down and the rain stopped and the waves got still. The disciples didn't understand that Jesus was God yet. He didn't know that. They looked at each other and said, who is this guy? That's pretty cool. I mean, if I were to be in a boat, I think I want Jesus there with me, right? So that if they were a little wild, they were a little bumpy. That, that I know that, that Jesus is going to make everything safe, right? Rainstorms, that's right. Snowstorms. You probably haven't seen many of those, have you? When I lived in Philadelphia, we got three feet of snow in one storm. That's taller than you, right? Yeah. <laughs> I remember being little, too. We used to get lots of snow. But that was up north. We were supposed to get snow. Unlike down here where you're not supposed to get snow, right? So, why do you think Jesus was sleeping in the back of the boat? You don't know? Well, the day, the, that day, he had been teaching people and talking to people and telling people all about God. So he was tired, right? You get tired when you get around people a lot. That's good. The thing is, is, you know, if you're smart, you watch the weather forecast, right? And you know not to go out in the boat when it gets stormy. But on the Sea of Galilee, a storm will come up just like that. And, that, and they didn't have weathermen, did they? No, they didn't, have, they didn't have meteorologists to tell us what was going to happen. They had to look at the cloud. They had to look at the wind and say, I wonder if there's a storm coming. But even today, on the Sea of Galilee, in Israel, it can come up, a storm can come up just like that. So how did those disciples feel? Sad? What else did they feel? They were in this boat, and this boat is rocking. Scared. When do you get scared? You see a spider? I tell them if they're outside, I'm not going to bug them. But if they come in my house, that's it. <laughs> I don't like them. How about snakes? I don't like snakes. Emma, what are you? What are you afraid of? Tigers. Yeah, yeah, tigers. They're they're big cats. I mean, even little cats. They 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 can be nice to you one minute and scratch you the next, can't they? Yeah. And so big cats, yeah, I can imagine those being scary. Do you think Jesus is with us when we're scared? Yeah? 
when we're having a, when we're scared and when something's happening that we don't understand, like a bad storm, you think Jesus is with us? Yeah, Jesus is always with us. So I think that's what we should thank God for, right? That God, Jesus is with us always, even when we're scared. Okay, let's pray. Jesus, we are so glad that you can make the storms stop. Thank you for being with us and everyone we name in the midst of storms. Thank you for bringing us peace and stillness. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you. Oh, actually, can you come back a second? I have something for you. It's a little comic strip with today's gospel lesson in it. There you go. Grace to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, Christ his, his Son. Son. Amen. Amen. start this morning by asking you a question. Why? Why do bad things happen? For as long as humans have experienced suffering, we have asked the question, why? Or another way of saying it is we have been asking this question since the beginning of time. This morning's first reading comes from the book of Job. Job was a wealthy man blessed with a large family. Job 1 tells us that he had seven sons and three daughters, that he owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 yoke of oxen, and 500 donkeys, and a large number of servants. The book of Job tells us that he was the greatest man among all the people in the East. He was very blessed until one day he loses almost everything. The camels, the oxen, and the donkeys are stolen by neighboring tribes. The sheep die in a fire sparked by lightning. And his ten children are killed when the house they are celebrating in together collapses collapses in the wind. And Job's first response to losing all his wealth, to losing his children, is to praise God. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked I will depart. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. May the name of the Lord be praised. In this, Job did not sin by charging God with wrongdoing. And then if that were not enough, Job then becomes very ill. His wife tells him to curse God and die. But Job remains faithful. Job's so-called friends come and try to con and beg him to confess. Confess your sins, Job, so that God will forgive you. And Job continues to say, I am blameless before the Lord. Now most of his friends, they're unmoved by his claims of innocence, insisting that he must have offended God. Why else would so much suffering come to Job in such a short time? As human beings, we are always looking for cause and effect relationship. When something bad happens, we want to find the cause so that bad thing will not happen again. It's simply how we're hardwired. But maybe, just maybe, there is no answer to this question. 
Maybe bad things happen because we live in a broken world among broken people. This is the question that the book of Job is trying to answer. Now the reading that we have today, it comes from the end of Job's saga. Job is no longer praising God. After listening to his friends accuse him of a variety of illicit and morally questionable behavior, Job finally breaks, saying, Look, God, if I have done something wrong, then come out with it. Take me to court. Put me on trial and let me defend myself. Why are you doing this to me? That's my paraphrase of chapter 31, verses 36 to 37. Oh, that I wish someone, I had someone to hear me. I sign now my defenses, let the Almighty answer me. Let my accuser put his indictment in writing. So Job is now asking God to explain himself. But it's not until we get to chapter 38, where our first reading begins this morning, that God responds to Job. I'm going to read to you a few verses from the message translation. And now, finally, God answered Job in the eye of a violent storm. God said, why do you confuse the issue? Why do you talk without knowing what, you talk, what you're talking about? Pull yourself together, Job, up on your feet and stand tall. I have some questions for you and I want some straight answers. Where were you when I created the earth? Tell me, since you know so much. And God goes on like this for two chapters. In chapter 40, Job humbly responds, I'm speechless. I have no words. I shouldn't have said anything. I've said way too much. I'm now ready to shut up and listen. And God begins with another set of questions. I have more questions for you, Job. Do you presume to tell me what I'm doing wrong? Are you calling me a sinner so that you can be a saint? And God goes on and on and on for another chapter and a half. And finally, Job admits his foolishness. I was talking about things I knew nothing about, things far too wonderful for me. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. The book of Job asks the simple questions. The simple question, why do bad things happen? And yet, we do not get an answer. God does not answer Job or answer us. And this is unsatisfactory because we want clear answers. We want someone to blame when things go bad. We want to find that cause and effect relationship so that we can avoid experiencing the pain and loss that Job experiences in this ancient book. And that sounds like bad news. But even if we do not get an answer to this eternal question, we learn something about God in this passage, in this book. Something which we need to remember. The book of Job teaches us that God can handle our anger. And God can handle it when we lash out in pain. Warning, doing so may get you a lecture from God. You may be put in your place as God puts Job in his place. But God does not strike us down or punish us 
when we demand answers from God. Too long the church has taught people that we cannot complain to God, that we cannot be angry with God. And yet the Old Testament gives us a number of places where people confront God in a variety of ways. Jacob literally wrestled with God at the river of Jabbok on the eve of his reunion with his brother Esau. Moses argued with God when God announced that Moses was going to return to Egypt to rescue the Israelites. Five times Moses tried to get out of going back to Egypt. And finally God said, Moses, you need to go now before I lose my temper. Maybe as parents you've said something like that. That's my paraphrase, by the way. Even Elijah, the great prophet, approached God on, the Mount, on Mount Horeb and complains to God, I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty, but the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, torn down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I alone am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Bible teaches us that God can handle our anger. God can handle our complaints. The second thing that we are reminded of in the book of Job is that even on the worst day of our life, God does not abandon us. Despite everything that Job goes through, God did not abandon him. Job may not have seen or felt God's presence, but when God rebukes Job's so-called friends for their pitiful response to Job's suffering, we realize that God was in the room the whole time. As Paul tells the Romans, nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Nothing. Not even our worst day. God never promised that as Christians our life would be charmed and perfect. I think sometimes we forget that. But what we are promised is that on the worst day of our life and on all those other terrible, no good, bad days, we are not alone. God is with us. Amen. Our next hymn is Jesus, Savior, Pilot, Me.
saints of all times and places as we remember our common faith with the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, you may be seated for the prayers. Let us come before the triune God in prayer. Holy God, you gather your people from east and west, north and south. We pray for the mission of the church throughout the world, that your steadfast love may be made known to all peoples. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You laid the foundations of the earth and the waters are the womb of creation. The morning stars sing your name, and all creation shouts for joy. We pray for your blessed creation, that it may continue to flourish and magnify your glory. Lord, in your mercy. You keep watch over all nations. We pray for countries experiencing violence, hunger, and unrest. God, worldwide and local community organizations in their efforts to establish safety and justice. Lord, in your mercy, you are close to the brokenhearted and near to those in distress. We pray for those who are experiencing oppression. Liberate us from the systems and chains that bind us. Remove the barriers that separate us from one another. Lord, in your mercy, generous Savior, you befriend those who are sick, suffering, poor, lonely, outcasts, rejected, or sick. Grant healing and love to all in need, especially Cheryl Beatonball, Tim and Terry Beatonball, Steve Bishop, Jody Black, Patsy Chapel, Barry Dowd, <coughs> Bernice Fort, Juanita Former, Shelby Hartle, Melissa Hutchinson, Melinda Jaqua, Francis Long, Joe Morris, Dan Rishaw, Judy Sadler, Marin Schroer, Bernice Sheely, Jack Sheely, Pat Steve Wise, Morgan Word. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. You dwell with us in this faith community. We pray for our leaders and elders. Grant them knowledge, patience, and kindness that through their leadership you may be exalted in this assembly. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those struggling economically because of this virus, for small businesses struggling to stay open, for those unemployed and underemployed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For those whom you lift to both aloud and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Your love endures in all situations. Open this Father's Day, excuse me, on this Father's Day, we pray for those who are fathers or wish to be fathers for those with broken or strained relationships, for those who are missing their fathers, and for fathers who have lost children. Bless and strengthen them, Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your abiding grace. Amen. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where, Where there is hatred, hatred let, let me, me sow love. love. Where, Where there is injury, pardon. pardon. Where, where there, there is, is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, joy. O divine master, grant, grant that, that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, 
It is, it is in pardoning that we are, that we are pardoned, and it, and it is, is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Would you please stand for the Lord's Prayer? Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. Before we continue with our final hymn, um, two notices that were forgotten to be announced this morning. Next Sunday after church, there is a group going to see the 4th of July uh, concert at, at First Baptist. There are 15 tickets. And please let Wendell or Barbara Wise know if you're planning on going because they want to make sure they use all the tickets. And the second announcement was um, this is it this coming Saturday? The friendship group is going. Where are they going? More to, to, to yes. <laughs> so again, speak with Barbara or Wendell if you want more information about that. And with that said, let us. Uh, conclude with My Life Flows On in Endless Song. in peace you are the body of Christ. Christ.